We'll get to episode 227 in just a moment, but before we do, I'd like to ask you for your support of I Can't See You. Whenever you need to shop at Amazon.com, please use my link by going to ICan'tSeeYou.com slash Amazon. That'll take you right to the Amazon.com homepage. Shop as you normally do. Check out as you normally do. It doesn't cost you anything more, and I will earn a small commission on most qualifying purchases. Again, that's I can't see you.com slash Amazon. And remember, I can't see you sounds like a whole sentence, but it's only seven characters long. I C A N T C U dot com slash Amazon. Thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. From Studio B in Swarthmore, this is the I Can't See You podcast with David. It's like blind people for dummies. Hello there, and welcome to episode 227 of I Can't See You. My name is David, at David Benj on all the socials. I really do appreciate you joining me for this episode, and as usual, I have a few things to talk about. Actually, maybe today only a couple of things, but we'll see. We'll get into it and see where we go. I do want to lead off... For the last time until football season comes, talking about fantasy anything. Unless I have some sort of fantasy dream or something. Nah, I probably won't share that. (laughs) So as I've mentioned, I was in the fantasy hockey finals against my birthday brother, Nick. And it was an uphill battle, even though Nick and I had very similar records. I finished one slot above him in the standings during the regular season, and the finals went back and forth. I was leading by one or two. Then the next day I was down by a one and it just went back and forth. But for the last few days leading up to the final day of the season, I was up five to four. And even one day I was up six to three. But going into the final games, and there were only two on that Friday night, Buffalo played Columbus and Colorado played Nashville. I never even thought about picking up another goalie. I had three great goalies. And by the time I even would consider it, I was out of transactions. And my one goalie from Toronto had an injury and didn't play probably the last four games of the season, meaning the last four days of the season, I guess, because Toronto didn't have that many games. Maybe they only had two. So I never considered that. Nick, on the other hand, was very smart about it. He saved a transaction and was able to pick up the Buffalo goalie. So in the last game of the season, he had the Buffalo goalie and the Colorado goalie. Now, I don't know if you listened to the scores on that final day of the season, but do you know what teams won? (laughs) Buffalo and Colorado. Do you know whose goalies won? Buffalo and Colorado, who Nick had on his team. I went from having one more win with goaltenders after Thursday's game to after Friday's game having one less because of both his wins. And that swung from 5-4 to four in my favor to 5-4 to in Nick's favor. So congratulations to Nick. He won for the second year in a row. And it's obviously fitting since he's Canadian, right? But it was a great season. It was a lot of fun. And I don't know, I kind of have been missing the last couple of days, and I'm recording this on Sunday afternoon, so it really has only been a couple of days. I'm missing checking scores and looking to see what players are available and things like that. So I, <laughs> I, I'm I, already looking forward to football season. So I'm not doing baseball. Baseball just seemed like it was too much. And I know in the past when I, it, it just took too much time. So maybe I'll do something more constructive with that time. But like I said, I do miss it already. Again, congratulations to Nick and his second straight championship He said to me when we were texting back and forth after I congratulated him that he said it proves that he's no fluke. And he was never a fluke to begin with since he won four in the football and he won last year in hockey. 
he will never be considered a fluke. He is a legend in fantasy sports, in my book. And I'm I'm guessing everybody else in either the all-blind football or all-blind, well, sorry, no-look pass hockey. So again, congrats to Nick. As I mentioned last week, I started at CBVI in Chester, which is very close and convenient for me. They do offer transportation, but the fact that it's so close, it only takes five to ten minutes to get there from the time I get in the car to the time I get out of the car there. And that part is great. Now, I started training this week, and I was really happy to get back into it. And then we started going into actual Windows things. It wasn't just about JAWS, which is the screen reading software that I'm relearning. And JAWS stands for Job Access with Speech. And that's basically what this software is meant to do. It's to help folks who are blind and visually impaired gain employment because they can use this on a Windows computer which, of course, most businesses use, and be able to work most jobs. There are always some hiccups when it comes to screen reading and software and and Windows itself, (laughs) which I'll get into in a minute. But it's been great to get back into it, but I never thought that I would ever have to think about how to file, how to save a file on a Windows machine again, and I forgot how different it is than on the Mac. And when we were doing it the other day, on Thursday or Friday, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. And I just kept thinking, man, a Mac is so much easier. Why couldn't they just make voiceover as easy as everything else is? And it would be a slam dunk, other than the fact that most businesses use Windows machines and not Macs. So it's been going pretty well. As always, when you are blind or visually impaired, there is a lot of things that have to be remembered. And as I am now 58 years old, (laughs) there's more and more things I'm not remembering. So that has been an issue. I was talking to my friend Brian last night, and he actually sent me over some main JAWS commands that are most helpful. Obviously, not all of them, because there's so many. I don't even know how many there are. But he sent me over in Numbers. Numbers is the spreadsheet program that comes on a Mac. If you're not familiar with Mac, it's the equivalent of Excel. Excel on a Mac is not great. And if you remember when I got this computer almost five years ago, and I've said a few times, I didn't want to ever have any kind of Microsoft product on it. So I never got Microsoft Office. And again, it plays a little bit different on a Mac than it does on a Windows device. So I've been happy with pages for my word processing. I've been happy with numbers for my spreadsheets. Now, there have been some issues when I send a file to someone who is blind and using a screen reader, even when I convert it to an Excel spreadsheet before I send it. And so that's that's an issue. And again, there are some issues in general with JAWS and Excel and things like that. But so far, it's going okay. I've been taking my computer each day, and fortunately, everything was good with the computer out of the box, so I'm happy about that, though I have been taking it in the same box that it came in every day that I was there last week because I didn't have a bag yet. Well, the bag came from Amazon yesterday, and I will now have that to take it in. And when I say it came yesterday from Amazon, it's not like I ordered it last week. I ordered it the day before, so it didn't take a long time. It was just me procrastinating and finding one that I wanted and not just ordering the one that Liz put in the cart. You know which one I ordered, of course, the one Liz put in the cart for me to look at. And before I looked around, I just looked at that and said, that one's fine. I'll take it. And I saw that it was free returns if I didn't like it, so I was good to go. So I will take that in the coming week when I go Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. There has been an issue, though, at CBVI, and it has to do with Verizon. Their hotspot is down, so I can't get on their internet. The computers that they have there are on, but I can't get on, and 
So I've been using one of their computers to learn, which is fine because I like the full-size keyboard. And in fact, even when I was doing things the first day, I was given a regular keyboard to use and it was a USB keyboard and I, I actually have one. I was going to go buy one and then I realized we had some keyboards laying around and I wondered if they would work. And sure enough, we had a couple of USB keyboards. Ironically enough, they're Mac keyboards, but they will work because they've got the numpad and it, at least I'll give them a go. I haven't tried them yet. And I'm not going to take that with me when I go down to CBVI because they have a keyboard there if they ever do get the hotspot fixed. But expanding on the lack of hotspot or Wi-Fi available, on Friday, the only people in the building were me and Alvin, who is another guy learning JAWS, John and Johnny Lynn, who are the instructors, and Mark, who is the driver. So of the five of us, there was one of us that had sight enough to see to do things. And so when we were leaving, after training was done, we all walked out together. John and Johnny Lynn, who are both blind, could not clock out on their own. Because when the hotspot isn't working, they can't get to the software that they need to get to to clock out on their phones. Of course, their iPhones have voiceover. They use an iPad right near the front door for folks to clock in and clock out. The problem is it doesn't have voiceover turned on because I'm not sure, but they may be the only ones who are blind or visually impaired that work there. I don't know if there's some others who work in the warehouse for the other things they do use that to clock in and out. And if so, they would be blind and visually impaired. But on Friday, when no one else was there, they had to have Mark clock them in and clock them out. And I said, as we were leaving, I said to the two of them, I said, so let me understand this. The place that is training blind and visually impaired folks on the computer so they could go out and get a job cannot clock in and clock out on their own because <laughs> the device used is not accessible. And they said, yeah. So I thought that was kind of funny and ironic. But otherwise, it's going, it's going well. And again, there's just a lot, a lot of things to remember. And that's going to be the di most difficult spot uh, for me, or dif the most difficult part for me, I should say. And I think what I need to do and I, it will happen more as I sit here, as I mentioned last week, when I'm on the main level of the house, when I can't come down to Studio B, that's when I'll go on. And I haven't been home enough over the last week because I've been doing the training. Oh, and the trainings are not two hours a day. They're three hours a day. I go from 10 to 1, getting picked up around 9.30 and getting dropped off a little before, a little little after 1, one fifteen ish By the time I get home, I make lunch for Ziggy and I. And at that point then, once we're done, Liz is usually home and then I can come down to Studio B. So when I am by myself on the main level, other than with Ziggy, of course, you know, Ziggy's always here, I will use that then. And that's, I'll sit at the kitchen table. I've got that computer now and the keyboard so I don't have to worry about this small I don't know that they're smaller, but they're obviously closer together. And one of the big issues that I've had for the week has been my hands and wrists and the pain and just not being able to feel stuff, especially on the laptop keyboard. The little nubs that are on the home keys, on the F and on the J, I can barely feel them. And <laughs> one of the things, as I'm feeling around for them, I always inadvertently touch the trackpad. And when I do that, it's sometimes I push hard enough that it takes the focus out away from what I was doing. So then I kind of have to start the whole process all over again, looking for what I was looking for. But my laptop does have the full numpad on, on the right-hand side and, and so forth and so on. So everything is good about it, and I can use it without a regular keyboard, but I'd much prefer to have a larger keyboard. So I'll try the Mac keyboard and see how it goes with it. Obviously, I'm familiar, <laughs> I'm familiar with it. 
So I'm interested to see what my rheumatologist says on Tuesday when I go regarding the issues with my hands. And it's not just my hands, but obviously when I'm sitting at a computer, the fact that my knee hurts doesn't matter one way or another as far as typing goes. Obviously, it bothers me a little bit, but <laughs> but it doesn't affect my typing or finding a key or whatever. So I'm interested to see what the rheumatologist says about the medicine that I'm taking. I would think that the medicine would have started to work more by now, and I don't think it's doing what it's supposed to do. Again, it's a little bit better than it was, but it's not a significant noticeable difference. I'm kind of double dipping this week with Just Listen and White Canes Connect because I thought it was something really important to get out because there's an important deadline coming up. Episode 069, which will be out by the time you hear this, is with Mike Walsh from Flight for Sight. And if that sounds familiar, flightforsight.net is the website that I helped create over the last nine or ten months. And they are doing three $10,000 travel grants to folks who are blind and visually impaired. And to be considered, you've got to be at least legally blind. That's 20 over 200. So Lisa and I got to speak to Mike, and he talked about the grants, and he talked about how Flight for Sight started, and all the neat things that they are doing, and I can't wait to see the three winners and what they are going to do. I have so many ideas on what to do with that, and I would love to go, and I I always wondered if I could travel on my own outside of the U.S. where there are into non-English speaking countries, and I thought it would be cool to go to, I'd love to go to the U.K. and go to a Premier League match and get the devices that they use to do the real-time commentary so that, unlike in U.S. professional sports, where if you listen to the commentary through your phone or some other means, it's, there's a delay. Whether you bring a transistor radio with you or you use your phone, like I said, there's a delay. Sometimes it's only a few seconds. Sometimes it could be 10 seconds. You'll hear the crowd cheering And then you'll hear what happened. And as I've mentioned before, talking with Party Gill from the UK, who's a big Leicester City fan, things aren't looking great for them, and they got smoked yesterday. (laughs) But it was to at least that one was expected. The week before his loss shouldn't have been a loss, but that's how it goes. And they are in the drop zone. If you're not familiar, there are 20 teams in the English Premier League. The bottom three at the end of the season, get dropped into the next league down. That would be like if your favorite Major League Baseball team finished in the bottom three, they would then end up in AAA the next season. That's how it goes. So it's very cool, and it makes the season very exciting because not only are they battling for the top spot, which my team Arsenal is in currently, but they also are battling to stay out of the bottom three. So the one thing Leicester City has in its favor is their goal differential. It's very small compared to some of the others. I want to say it's at this point it might be minus nine. I I think it was minus seven before the game against Manchester Manchester City yesterday. So I think it's minus nine. I'm not I haven't looked at the standings today yet. In the Premier League, there are volunteers that do a commentary so it'll tell you what's happening on the field, sorry, on the pitch in real time as opposed to using radio or TV that has that delay in the U.S. And I don't understand in this day and age why they can't have something like that in U.S. sports. So I'd like to go to a game there and see how that all works And then from there, I'd love to travel down to go along the Mediterranean from, let's say, Malaga in Spain all the way over to the Amalfi Coast in Italy, because I'd love to live over there, maybe, but who knows? I haven't been there in so long, and I've only really been to the Côte d'Azur in France. I've never been to the 
Italian Riviera or the Amalfi Coast. Uh, fun fact, Liz and I were supposed to go to the Amalfi Coast on our honeymoon. And we had some issues with the business that I had at the time, the West Coast video, that I was afraid to travel that far. And if there was an issue, have to come back from there in a hurry. Again, that was <laughs> before the internet. It just made things a little more challenging then because you couldn't check in and log in and see how much money was going on, how people were clocking in and clocking out and so forth. So we didn't go and we ended up in Bermuda and we had fun in Bermuda. It was nice. And I would go back to Bermuda again, but we've never been to the Amalfi Coast and, um, and I'd like to go and I'd like to go and look and I'd like to live along the beach there. People say, why didn't you just go to the beach around here in the U.S.? The cost of living is a lot less over there. And that's the whole reason to go there. That would be my choice to go and to just to see if I could do it. I, I, and I would, it'd be great to have a $10,000 grant. And obviously I would love to produce content. And that's the big thing is to get other people motivated to get out of their house and go and do things. That's one issue that a lot of blind people have is they're just afraid to travel on their own. They just don't have the confidence to get out and go. And as I've mentioned many times here, there's always a good chance that I will get hit by a car because I don't see it or hear it, or I think that it's safe to cross when maybe it's not and I could have an issue there. But I'm willing to take that chance because I don't want to sit at home and I want to get out. And it makes me think back to a, another White Canes Connect episode where we had Sam Seavey on from the Blind Life YouTube channel. And he said, well, it's easy to do YouTube. You just need some help setting up the, fir- setting up the camera initially. And that's fine for people who are doing talking head videos. I don't want to do a video like that. I want to do a video when I'm out and about. I want to go places and talk about it. While I'm at the place, not after I come back like I do here. So again, that's episode 069 of White Canes Connect. And it is available wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, all of them, Google, and on YouTube. Ziggy does not watch that one. I guess he should start watching that one too. And again, it's not really watching. It's a static image in the podcast playing in the audio track. So you can catch it up there. And if you were looking on YouTube, it's at PA Blind Podcast. So youtube.com slash at PA Blind Podcast. You can see all the episodes there. Well, all the episodes from, I think, 46, because that's when we finally got on there. But that is episode 069 of White Canes Connect, which now brings me into Just Listen. And I had hoped to grab some audio clips at CBVI, But every morning before we started, I forgot to ask John and Johnny Lynn (laughs) if I could record them when they're telling us something. So I will ask them this coming week, and hopefully next episode I will have some of that. And so you can hear some of the commands and some of the things that you have to do and how JAWS sounds in next week's Just Listen. But in this week's Just Listen, I have a soundbite from episode 069, and it's Mike Walsh talking about the $10,000 grant and what you have to do. And again, they are giving three $10,000 grants away, not just one or not a $10,000 grant divided by three, three $10,000 grants. Here is Mike Walsh from Flight for Sight on this week's Just Listen. We want people to keep in mind that You need to produce something that's educational, um, that's for a purpose. Um, We want people to go explore the world, engage with others. But at the end of the day, you're creating some sort of content, um, some sort of media that you post online, or some something that's tangible. Um, You know, you go out there and create something, or you go and travel and, and create a presentation, and you present it to whether it's schools, organizations. Um, do something that is along the lines of being educational. Um, Long story short, our mission is to give individuals who are blind and low vision the opportunity to explore the world, engage with others, 
and educate people about their lifestyles, their experiences and challenges. So what that means is they can do a whole range of different things, you know, case study, or you want to investigate an issue that could lead all the way to Congress. Hey, look at what this person found out about the difficulties of getting an Ubers with guide dogs, right? Um, there are all sorts of challenges like that, that we need to push the needle forward to give people who are blind and low vision to, to make their lives a little bit easier. So the clock is running. You have until May 1st to get your application in. You can go to flightforsight.net slash apply and fill out the application. You've got to be at least legally blind. That's 20 over 200 to be awarded the grant. You can bring others with you, but as Mike pointed out in episode 069 of White Canes Connect, the more people you bring, the less money you have to spend to do all the things you want to do. I would just go on my own because it's a challenge to me and I would want to see if I could do it. How would it be going into a non-English speaking country through customs? How would I even find it? That All things that I would love to know if I could do it. And I'm sure folks would help me. But I would love to see if I could do it. And that's why I would do it, just to see if it could be done. And of course, producing content, I would have a ball doing that. So again, check out White Canes Connect episode 069 with Lisa and I and our guest, Mike Walsh from Flight for Sight. And that'll do it for episode 227 of I Can't See You. Please reach out to me on social media if you've got questions, comments, show ideas, things you love, things you hate things you'd love to see more of, show ideas, whatever, at David Benj on social. That's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, where you can also watch or listen to the episode. Again, nothing there to really watch. A static image of me in a cool hat that I never bought and the episode number and title of the episode. You can also reach out via email, I can't see you podcast at gmail.com. I can't see you podcast at gmail.com. Please reach out via phone. I'd love to have an audio bite of you telling me what you love, what you hate, anything. 646 926 6350. Again, 646 926 6350. You've got up to three minutes to leave your message. Please leave your name in town. If you do leave a message again, 646-926-6350. I'd love to hear from you. As always, show notes are available over on the website. I can't see you.com slash 227. That's I can't see you.com slash 227. Remember, I can't see you sounds like a whole sentence, but it is only seven characters long. I C A N T C U dot com slash 227. Did you count them on your fingers when I spelled it out? Thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate it. Be well, stay safe, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the I Can't See You podcast with David. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. And don't forget to share the podcast with your friends.